Lumen is the new fully dynamic global illumination and reflection system in Unreal Engine 5. Today, we're going to take a look at it and learn how to use it in your architectural projects. When Epic gives you lumens, use them in your projects. So, look at this. <laughs> hey guys, it's Yahya Yahya from VR Division. Welcome back and let's get started. When you start a new project in Unreal Engine 5, Lumen, Global Illumination and Reflections are enabled by default as well as their dependencies such as the Generate Mesh Distance field. However, let's say you're switching your projects from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, you need to enable Lumen. And to do that, go to the settings, go to the project settings. Once you find rendering, click on it, then scroll all the way down to where we have Global Illumination, switch it to Lumen and the same for reflections, switch it to lumen as well. Once you enable lumen on the global illumination and reflections, you need to enable generate mesh distance fields. When you enable this, you need to restart your engine. If you can't find this, just type in the search panel here, generate mesh distance fields. Tick it, restart your engine, and then you should be good to go. By default, lumen works, it's just like magic. So I'm going to get rid of this emissive material on our mesh here and you can see we don't have anything anymore. So let's go ahead and create a directional light. Press Ctrl L. Let's rotate it a little like this. And as you can see, we are getting indirect lighting <laughs> just like that, just like magic. Let me scale this down to the way it was and let's add more lighting elements. Usually. I always add my direction light first, then my skylight, and after that I add the post-process volume, and after that I add my sky atmosphere, then my exponential height fog. After I add all of these things, I go to my directional light and I scroll all the way down to find atmosphere and cloud, just like Unreal Engine 426, we need to enable atmosphere sunlight, so we can have our sun. Now by holding Ctrl L, we can control our light and you can see how beautiful this is, the indirect lighting. So there are multiple ways to control the indirect lighting and lumen in general. One of them obviously on the light. So when we click on the light here, we can find something called indirect lighting intensity and we can increase that. As you can see now, we have more indirect lighting. For more options, we can go to the post-process volume. Let's first make our post-process volume global by going to the post-process volume settings, make it infinite. Once you make your post-process volume infinite, go to global illumination and you can see the method we are using now is lumen. We can switch to screen space, SSGI or rate raised. One of the settings we can increase from here from the post-process volume is the final gather quality. You cannot see now, but let me see if I can control the light a little. So for example, look here, to get rid of this weird flickering, we need to enable the quality and increase it a little. So by default, it's on one. We can make it two, three, four, and so on. There are so many things I'm still learning. I don't know what is the maximum value, but here's the minimum value or less. Can we make it even less? No, we can't. Here's two. We can't go above than two, but we can not type four or something, but I don't know if it's making any difference. Yeah, it is making some difference. And we can see that the frame rate is dying. However, I'm running on GTX 1080 Ti and I'm happy. I'm happy with this. One of the cool things we can do as well, you guessed it, when we started this tutorial is the emissive material. I could not be happier when I saw this emissive material. Emitting light and indirect light, I was like, wow. Try placing a point light to this box and you can see it's indirect lighting as well. So if you increase the intensity. All right, that's enough with this test scene. Let's go to something else. 
There is a link to data smith in the description below, so go check it out. I exported the scene without the lights and I already have some lights I'm gonna show you. Just like this, we have this scene lit with lumen in few seconds. There is no need to bake the light, there is no need to wait, there is no need for anything. The result, if you ask me, is just incredibly amazing. All of this in real time, my mind is blown and it's still only the second day of this. There is still so much to learn and I totally love it. So this is our scene and to take a look at the lights, how I achieved this, I'm going to disable this and what I did is similar to what we created before. Let me actually enable that and show you what I did. So here is my lighting setup. I have a directional light. It's all on the default settings. Nothing is special. Exponential height fog with reduced setting because this is a default setting for the exponential height fog. And this is what I usually like to do. I just set it on super low quality because I don't like the black outside for the lower hemisphere. So I just do this. We have a sky atmosphere, which is the physically accurate sky. So when we change the direction of the light like this, if you want the light color to change, you need the sky atmosphere and you need to enable on the directional light the atmosphere and cloud. And now when we change the position of the sun, it can change dynamically. Amazing. We also do have a skylight that I only increase the intensity scale from 1, like this, to 5. It was depending on what I'm trying to achieve. So I think 2 perhaps is nice. I forgot to mention when you are switching from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, the virtual shadow maps are a new method to generate high quality shadows as you can see. So this is the normal good old way and this is the new virtual shadow maps. Pretty awesome stuff. Let's take a look at what more can we do with these emissive maps. But first, let me get rid of this ugly translucent material. So just set the refraction to something like 1 or 1.1. Then if you can select the emissive material behind it or basically when you're selecting, when you hit T on your keyboard, you will be able to select what's behind a translucent surface. So now I'm going to hit T again. I can select this door or this massive glass frame. If I hit T again, I will be able to select the, the whole building in this case. And the beauty of Lumen in general, this is one big mesh, as you can see here. There is no light bake, no nothing. And it seems to me like everything I learned about light baking and optimizing the geometry is just gone. Not gone yet, because we still need to bake the light for virtual reality projects which is unfortunate, but I hope in future, we will never need to bake the light again. To have more fun, we can bring another light like this rectangular light. And let's see what it does. Some of the things you can notice are these noises here, which is kind of unfortunate. I was also looking at the documentation regarding enabling virtual shadow maps there are also some console commands we can use so in this case we can reduce the quality of the shadow with this console command so this is set to one you can see the noise here and this is set to seven which should be the default where we don't have that much noise i believe with seven and we have this much noise this is not good so let's try set this to 1. Oh, it's really bad. And if we set this to something like 5, it's less. What about 7, the default value? Nothing really changed. So can we go crazy like 10? It seems no. So it's not perfect yet. There are these little issues, but honestly for me, I'm fine with this stuff because this is super new. Is still work in progress. I would love to see in the comments what are the problems you guys are having in general and if you find any solutions. So that's that. Let us switch to another scene and see how Lumen will work with that. 
This is also another project I exported with one click with DataSmith to Unreal Engine and I didn't do anything except for adding my own lights here and I kept everything else at default. So what is interesting about this that we have this emissive background that is giving really cool effect to the environment. So here's with it, here's without it, try to remove it, here's without it, that's cool. Sometimes you may notice stuff like this, it's not because of Lumen, the light leak, it's because the mesh itself could be used like two-sided material. For example, when I imported this, if I opened the master material, I had to enable two-sided on it. We still need to take care of our meshes somehow. So now there is no two-sided, you can see, hey, the sun is coming like through this part. So enable two-sided, save, and lighting should be way much better. So let's grab some rectangular lights here. We're gonna press G to see our rectangular light. Rotated 90 degrees. One of my very favorite shortcuts when I'm working with my Unreal Engine projects is to go to visibility and show only selected. It just makes my life so much easier. So I'm going to set that up. Show only selected. Usually it's H and hide selected I'm comfortable with Control H so Control H and hide all shift H to hide selected and H to isolate my selection I love this if you're new to this if you hold Control and middle mouse button you can also go to top left right back and this is one of my other short favorite shortcuts. Do you guys know where are the mesh editing tools like the UVs, unwrap, selecting faces? If you know, please let me know in the comments as well. I'm going to press Shift 8 to switch to the modeling editing mode. Then we can select a box like this. Set the height to something like 3. This to something like 5. Shift 1 again to switch back to the select mode. Then we can add that emissive material I created earlier. See from distance. This looks amazing. So you know the drill, guys. So back in 3ds Max, you can add a second ID and just assign an emissive material and you don't have to place lights again. So I am just keep getting impressed more and more by Lumen. These are interesting, also this like screen space stuff, I don't know what is exactly going on. There is a lot to read in the documentation and that will be for part 2. <laughs> However, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope now you know how to use Lumen with your projects like this. I would love to see what you are guys creating. Feel free to join us on Discord and show us your work in progress. We would love to see what you're creating, I mean look at this. Lumen uses mesh distance field in order to illuminate our scene. So I was trying to understand what's causing this and I made a duplicate of this floor to make it as a ceiling because this seemed to me not that right. So I made it, moved it slightly on the top just to cover the ceiling area like this. And I still had that problem so I went to show, visualize, mesh distance fields and I was like, hmm. So I went also to the tab and I noticed that the mesh distance fields are still overlapping my ceiling. So it seemed to me then that we need to move the ceiling even higher than this. So now it's above them, yes, we see that, but it's still doing no effect yet. There are many ways to fix this. The first one is just increase the ceiling height. So now, as you can see, when we move the ceiling on the tab of this part, now we can see, ah, the ceiling looks way much better. And now I am impressed. As you can see, this floor, it does not exist here. So we need to take this floor, then also move it to the tub. Just like this. I think it's okay if they are not exactly next to each other because we need the mesh distance field around that, right? 
So I was thinking, well, just delete this and make this really big. Go to the top, cover this whole area. Right, just like this. And there are some problems here because this area is not closed, so that's why. So we can simply then bring one of these meshes and do something like this. Or fix it in 3ds Max. So this looks way much better. The other way we can improve the lighting quality, we can go to the static mesh itself and go to the build settings and we can search for the distance field resolution scale. So now it's set to one, which is the default value on all of these meshes. We can make five, perhaps. And you can see now it's less. So if you make it less, perhaps. Cool. So play with these settings. Also here we have two-sided distance field generation. I am actually interested. So if you remove this and we enable this, is it going to fix our problem? Nope, unfortunately. What about this? Oh my god. So the higher, the lower? Why am I asking this? We can always go to show. We can go to visualize and mesh distance field. Alright, so let's see. Five. There is no mesh distance field anymore. Ah, oh, there is. Oh, it was generating. What about 0.2? So the higher, the better, I guess. So what about 20? It's generating the mesh distance field. You cannot see it, guys, but in the corner, there is building mesh distance field. It's taking forever. Okay, just finished. So did this make any difference? Let's go ahead and see. So go back to visualize and disable this mesh distance fields. Since we're going to use Lumen a lot, I wonder if there is a shortcut for this. Mesh distance. Ooh, this is cool. So let's say Ctrl Shift M. Nice. So we can set a shortcut for that with Ctrl Shift M to toggle the mesh distance field. Awesome. The other way we can increase the resolution of the mesh distance fields, let me bring that back to one, is actually by going to settings, to project settings. Hello, yes, and go to rendering, then go to mesh distance fields, voxel density. So larger values can consume memory very quickly. Be careful with this. And changing the setting requires restart of the editor. I'm not gonna do that for now because I have so many projects in here so it will take forever to generate mesh distance fields. So the easiest fix perhaps is still, there are still some work we need to do on the geometry. Alright everyone, leave a like if you learned something, subscribe if you're not already. If you wanna support us making more videos, go to Gumroad, check out our masterclass in architecture in Unreal Engine. We already covered a lot in Unreal Engine 4 and we are going to make many many more tutorials in Unreal Engine 5. As you can see there are more than 46 happy students, you could be one of them. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers!